Hello, welcome to the Dare Show podcast where I talk music, I talk music reviews, I talk pop culture, and this is a little pop culture, a little music. I'm going to start, this is the beginning of the Judd's documentary, I think she called it, or Nona called it, on OWN. It came out, you know, 10 years ago, but I decided, you know, with all things happening with Naomi, Naomi, Naomi. I wanted to talk about it uh, because I've watched it already, but I don't think I've finished it, but I watched most of it already. And so I'm just rewatching it again and taking notes and seeing it through a different perspective. And, but first I want to try this new Snapple drink, light and refreshing elements, rain by agave nectar. Oh, that's pretty good. It's like just enough sugar or whatever to please you. Okay, let's talk. <laughs> let's talk. Um, the first episode of The Judge, which is called, the um, episode is called Naomi's Secret. Woo! Hold on. Okay, so the show starts off with the ladies um, talking about the goals for the tour. Now... Naomi's goal is to not be manipul- manipulative and to build a strong relationship with her, with Wyona. Why not? Why Noma? Why Yona? Wait, why Noma? Why Noma? Why Noma? Why Yona? Why Yoma? What is wrong with me? <laughs> why Noma? Why Nona? Why Nona? Oh my goodness. So, uh, <laughs> she wants to build a. <laughs> <laughs> better relationship with Winona. And um Winona's goal is to, you know, build a relationship and uh not be so toxic with her mother. Yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot really what hers was. So this is her first tour in ten years. This is about like 2010, 11, 12 that this came out about ten years ago. On the own. Like, I remember watching it, but I, d- I didn't remember, like, any specific details. So, you know, like, I'm, like, I'm abreast on basic... I know who they are, basically. I'm not a huge... F- I'm not a fan. I'm not even going to say I'm a huge fan. Um, I love Winona's um, song she did with Patti LaBelle on Patti's gospel album, My Everything. The, the song is called My Everything. I love that song. It's a great song, great vocals. Um, but I'm not like a huge fan. But I'm like, okay, I can get into this, you know. Some red hair, some country toying. Let's get into it. Let's talk. Um, and she, Ronona was talking about, you know, they had uh, a face for the public, basically. You know, wanting to... They showed, like, being this power duo, this healing loving group to the public but then behind doors at home it was very destructive it was very like i think she like eventually they talked about how like they fist fought and oh my lord like they just did not get along um i think i guess we'll talk about it a little bit more in the at the towards the ending but they just did not get along growing up hurt her mother didn't really know what she was doing. Winona felt different. And so her mother being not knowing what she was doing too much and trying to work and do all these things um, just cultivated such a bad relationship, a, a, a bad relationship. Um, so then we're like in rehearsals for the tour, which I, that's the part I really love about this documentary that or show, whatever. Uh, I love, like, behind-the-scenes stuff on, like, tours and music and stuff. And so we see that, and they're talking about, you know, the the first beginning song, the first song on the tour. And so Winona's, like, they're immediately having differences um, about what's going on. <sighs> I take it as this is Winona's tour, and Naomi is just tagging along in a sense, in the sense of sort of maybe their career. I don't really know. Let me know if I'm being mistaken or not. Um, but Na- Naomi's like, I want to be carried out like Madonna with, you know, these men carrying me. And Winona's like, no. Oh, by the way, when, at this age, at this point, Winona's in her late 40s. 
and um, Naomi's in her late 60s. So <laughs> Naomi is, you know, I'm taking personality um, cues and traits. Uh, Naomi's very uh, flaring and emotional. She's very, um, maybe even camp in a sense. Um, Na- um, Winona is very smooth, very open, very, very open, very uh, expressive. Uh, <laughs> Very expressive, uh, again, emotional, loving, uh, smooth, though. She's very smooth. So, um, Naomi's like, no. Wanda's no, like, no, you're not being, like, dragged on stage by men. This is, I'm standing with a song. There's a song playing. Me and my guitar. And you're going to, you know, follow what we told you. It's just like, oh, all right. So then we meet Ted, who is their therapist slash life coach, and he's going to be on tour with them throughout the dates. Um, Then they talk about Peaceful Valley, which is where um, they all live. Winona, Ashley Judd, the actress sister, and wait, and Naomi. (laughs) I was like, I missed somebody. Um, And and Naomi. Well, Naomi's uh, part of the Acres. Is called Peaceful Valley. Now, I did not realize this when I first watched it. <laughs> Naomi saw the estate, saw, you know, the campus, quote unquote, the the village, the land. She's like, I love it because it has like peaks of it. It's a huge ass piece of land. Um, very beautiful. Um, she's like, I loved it. I love, you know, looking at it. It just brought me like, peace and you know i love the creeks and the valleys and the hills and stuff like that so they're like cool i'm gonna buy it and then winona saw her land was like i'm so jealous i want me some land so she bought her pieces of land and then she gave ashley uh i think she said like five thousand five acres or something like that um of the land and i did not know she gave it to her um well you know that's what she says um but she wanted, you know, as a family to heal and bring togetherness and just be a family, which um, is really cute, really cool. So then Naomi talks about her pathology. They're going through um, pictures for the tour. And Naomi's like, well, you know, pathologically, um, pathologically, my family's full of secrets. I think she was. She said she was like molested two times by her uncle. She didn't say it on the show, but you know, in other interviews I've heard, I believe it was her uncle she was molested by, and she was like, "I just kept that in. I never told anybody, and now I want to tell her I know now." All of a sudden, so I was like, "Okay." <laughs> um, why is we starting? Oh, okay, so Winona is. We skip to Winona, fresh off a divorce. Before the divorce, she was going to do some reconstruction on her house. I think she said she's going to add 5,000 feet. Uh, it might be the wrong numbers to her house. But she got divorced and that took um, a toll on her financially. So she's building she's building herself back up and she's doing this renovation while they're going to go on tour. I guess it just, you know, another thing in the chaos and destruction about the relationship and, you know, touring and the family and all that. Um, she was just like, you know, I was so used, I'm such a pleaser and I just bought men things, suits, cars, accessories, how, like whatever they wanted. I just bought it. And she's like, I don't, I didn't really have a good relationship with men and I try to navigate that. It was just bad. So then we meet her new boo who she's still with Mr. Cactus. And they're just talking about, you know, this is new. We're trying to figure everything out, which is cool. So then we skip ahead a little bit. We're they go out to eat, and they they're talking about going on tour and starting to pack. All of a sudden, Naomi starts her first breakdown of the season, baby. She's just tearing up and crying and just bawling her eyes out. Oh my God, I miss my what's she call him? Pop Papa? I don't know what you call your dad, Papa, but. Papa Judd or something, me, 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 Papa, whatever they call it, uh, the country people call it, oh, the Southern people, because some black people call them, but uh, whatever they call, uh, whatever she called her dad, her dad, she's, she's missing her dad, she was like, he was so proud of you, and he loved that, you know, you were so talented, and that you became this big star, and then she was just, 
um, she wishes he could see her right now. And, you know, she's like, I miss her. And then they're just both breaking down crying. She's like, okay, that came out of nowhere. So I'm going to cry too because, you know, this is a moment. So then, um, well, you know, it shows, you know, I, the older you get, it doesn't matter what age you are. Once, you know, certain people leave your life, you miss them. And yeah, so then Naomi gets her shots for her knees. Her doctor called it like lubricant or something. She's like bad knees. So she's like, I'm going on tour. I need my knees to be squeaky clean. And so she gets these shots and she's cursing the man out. So then we skip to... Um, Winona, 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 talking about how she, for years, had this thing to be perfect for her mother, and she was like, I could have, I could have had the number one record in the in the country at the time, but because she was mad at me, I would think about what she was mad at me for then being proud and happy for this number one record. And it shows, you know, that's very destructive and very oof, heartbreaking. Um, so then they have this therapy session and with, uh, what's his name, Ted? And she's talking about the goals. They're talking about the goals. So another goal that they have for this uh, tour is not using each other for, oh, no, why no, no? It was like, I don't want to be used for like comical relief. We both do it, but I don't want you to do it because it's at my expense and our expense, and it's not cute. She was like, You were on stage one day and was like, You know what I, I know what it means? And it, the definition of I know what it means, it means passing gas or whatever she said. And she's like, We were all laughing, but at the end of the day, honey, <laughs> that's not cute. And so she's like, Okay. And so she's like, I'll work on that. And then why don't know was uh, like, oh, everybody, look. She says she's going to work on it. And then <laughs> she caught herself. And she was like, that wasn't good of me to say because it's undermining you. And the, the therapist was like, it was an interesting, weird moment because the therapist was like, well, Naomi, you need to recognize when she's doing that because... It's a part of the cycle. And I kind of get it. But then I, it was like, well, she didn't get it. But then I guess they were like, well, then Naomi's going to go bite back at her and not realize that she said it and not, you know, confront the situation. I think that's what they were saying, which was interesting. Uh, and then we, we talk about the first, the beginning perspective, experience differences that they have. They have, you know, down the road, we have a lot more talking about that. But Naomi was like, I have a different different perspective on things. I had no control um, raising you when you guys were children. I had like no control, and went on is like, do what? You had no what? Who are you talking about? Because you must be talking about some other Naomi uh, Judd. Because this Naomi Judd had me, you know, writing songs and practicing days after months after months and yada 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 and writing my Grammy speech and getting prepared for you know music. Which mean you had no control because you it was nothing but control, and that also oh okay that plays into them moving into the mountains. She was like, I don't know where Naomi got this from. Naomi should have explained this a little bit more, but she was like, when Naomi, when Winona turned twelve, it was like a big issue. She didn't want her like she said twelve. She didn't say like eighteen or anything. She said twelve. She's like, I didn't want her growing up and marrying some, like, drug dealer or drug fiend or something and changing her mind and twisting up her mind. So we moved to the mountains. I'm sorry, I'm here. We moved to the mountains of, I think, Kentucky, a mountaintop. And she was like, basically, she didn't say it, but I read it as reading as um, she took it as taking her girls and isolating them out of fear. And so she was like, we didn't have anything. I don't know if she was boasting or she was like, just telling us, you know, how poor they were. We didn't have like running water. We didn't have electricity. Well, no, no, not running water. There, there was like no electricity, no phone. 
um, their own welfare at certain times. It was just like, what? It was exhausting. It's, uh, I'm kind of exhausted, like, putting this all together. And so one on is like, we were, like, trauma bonded by the good experiences and the bad experiences. But, you know, the pipes freezing for, like, four days, so there's no running water for four days. That bonds you good and bad, because, you know, the bad of the obvious, but then the good, we gain respect from each other, and we learn how to survive being poor. My God, today. My God, today. That was that was the revelation of this episode for me. Not the girlfriend was, you know, molested, but that you dragged your kids up in the middle of nowhere just so you could isolate them from the world and what could possibly happen. <laughs> like I said, she had no idea what she was doing. So that's episode one. Let's talk about episode two. Next car, honey, next car. Hurricane Monona. Let's, um, episode one was, um, Naomi's secret. I think the real secret. I just want to say that the real secret was, <laughs> Naomi revealing that, you know, she kept her daughters locked up out of fear. Um, and poverty out of fear. Um, Hurricane Winona, episode two, let's talk about it. So, first I want to say this quote she said that probably has me here and everybody else here. People are, fr- fa- hold on, people are fascinated by the train wrecks, by the triumphs, the whole her story. I think she said her story. Her story by the Judds. And, yeah, that sums up everything. So, episode two starts off with them talking about fashion, getting ready for the tour. Um, Naomi has, like, these wings. These, like, fashion wings. Um, And, you know, her many gaudy country dresses. (laughs) Okay. Ronan is, like, getting her nails done. You know, she's to be careful about where to go because she plays the guitar. The guitar. Um, then they go into, um, this band slash creative meeting and Winona is like too overwhelmed, way too overwhelmed to make decisions, specific decisions. They're talking about like the backdrop and placement and stuff like that. And Winona is like, y'all, I don't know. Like, she's like, there's something in my brain that, you know, just kind of turns off when I'm overwhelmed and it's hard to make, you know, specific decisions. And it's like, oh, I kind of feel like that sometimes um the wings so then they're talking about they're sitting down um all together naomi and why and they're talking about the uh i think you know we see winona this is very hurricane winona aka stressed winona um coming out stressed from like getting the tour ready about to go on tour Getting the show together, about to go on tour. I'm sorry, and so out of nowhere, <laughs> Naomi says, "Well, I have wings." Oh, you can all watch this. By the way, it's on YouTube. Uh, the first episode shot up a mil to like a million views. Um, just you know, searching the judge on. This is all on YouTube. Um, <laughs> the wings. Um, she's like, I have wings. And she's like, you know, I'm gonna be wearing some wings, baby. And uh, Winona, Winona does like the little like office, stare at the camera, stare at everybody else. <laughs> the, uh, the TV stare and the off camera TV stare. And she is not happy about it. But and then again, I feel like she was like overwhelmed because she was like, you're kidding me, right? You're not really wearing wings. She's like, no, baby, I got wings and I'm going to fly around on stage. She's like, okay, no. Um, but I think she was just overwhelmed and that word just distracted her completely into another overwhelmed state of mind. So she was just like, it's like they're fashion wings right now. They're not actually actual wings. Um, I don't know what she thought. So Naomi is leaving first and she gets emotional on her bus. I'm like, girl, you'll be back. <laughs> they're going on like a, like a month tour. 
which isn't long compared to like, you know, tours these days. Usually tours are like three, four months. This is like a month tour. And it's like weirdly during like winter and weirdly during like Thanksgiving and Christmas. So it's like, okay. Um, so her husband, Larry, I think he was, um, they talk about the meeting. I believe he was an ex Elvis singer, a background singer for Elvis, her husband, Larry, um, one, uh, Naomi's husband, Larry. And I believe they said they met on like, he had a band and they were playing on the road and they were like, love at first sight, married at first sight. So then she goes and talks about like, Um, Naomi talks about, like, the seasons changing. Um, wait, okay, wait. She talks about her hep C first, and she's like, there was no cure at the time. He had to fly, um, her husband had to fly back and forth, like, every week to Memphis to get some kind of, like, shot, and then she was shoot up in her stomach. I, she, I wasn't clear what she said. But, um, that was in, like, 91, 90, and then in 95, she ended up being cured. It was a miracle. Um, season five, I mean, season. So they're on the bus and she's like talking to the bus driver and she's like, I just love the seasons and it's so beautiful, but it also reminds me, you know, seasons change and then they go on, Lord, Larry and Larry goes into, we're in the last season of our lives and, you know, she has baggage she needs to let go and this tour and she's on this journey of trying to let go baggage so she can live peacefully okay we're going a little dark into her demise a little bit i'm guessing so that okay let me stop there i'm gonna stop there so the, anyways we skip to winona and she's talking about weight and food and all of that and how you know she was scared of fame and fame was so new and she was like lonely and on you know fighting with her mother on the bus for like 10 years on the bus with her mother as you know, a, 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 an adult, a, a, what do you call it? A pre-adult, a young adult. I'm sorry, a young adult, a date, as they say in Maryland. Um, and so she was just scared of fame. So she, you know, found comfort in food. And so she's like, it provided me an excuse not to be intimate with my mother, be intimate with men, intimate with the fans. I can't give you all of me because you know I had this barrier built up, and you know she's lost at the she lost a lot of the weight. And she, um, you know, just trying to keep it up and just expressing and showing her, her story. So then Naomi gets to wherever they were, Kentucky, somewhere, the, 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 um, the, not stadium, the venue. And so out of nowhere, Ted and this man comes up on the uh, bus and <sighs> neurotechnology, they do this like neurotechnology thing and they hook her up to all these like cords and stuff it looks like she's getting a um sleep apnea test done and she's just like i'm so overwhelmed and she's having all these dreams these vivid dreams of her memories of past things you know like i guess of the like molestation or the sexual abuse she experienced and she's having vivid dreams about it. i'm like girl even now like you still is it revamping or you just been happened having this or is this for the cameras but anyways, um, so they hook him up and she is supposed to like see where she's at mentally or something like that. And it's some kind of analysis. I don't know. It was weird. There was no like, okay, girl. Okay, Naomi. Here is the analysis we have um, come up with. Here is what the results are for this test. It was none of that. It was just like, okay, she's getting this done and telling us she's having memories. All right. So anyways... <laughs> they skip to the day before the show. Winona has arrived. Her family arrived. Um, I was confused because it was like it seemed like her family was only there. Oh, I guess for the first show, her um her children because I guess they had to go back to school because I'm like they just they just drove just to go to the venue and then you gotta go fly back home. What? Okay, but anyways. So she's like, she fell out of bed and, you know, hit something. Here we go. Hurricane Winona starts, a.k.a. stressed Winona starts. She fell out of bed. <laughs> That's not funny. I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm laughing. She, she fell out of bed and her body was aching. 
her hair was wet because the only outlet in the uh, bus wasn't working was the hair dryer. And she's sad that her daughter's leaving. And by the way, now is like in jail for selling coke. I mean, meth. Distributing and making meth, but that's none of my business. Anyways, they have this talk about Oh, the sound check, sound check. So they're doing sound check, and again, Hurricane Winona is here, aka Stress Winona, and the musical changes. She's hearing something different. She's changing stuff. The band leader seem very relaxed and not trying to figure out what exactly is going on. He's like, somebody's messing up, but I don't know who it is. It's like, hello, you have a job to do, musical director. <laughs> um, and so then they're having dinner the whole crew and everybody, and then they bring up the wings again. Not the chicken wings, <laughs> Naomi's wings. Um, and it gets cut off, because, I'm well, not cut off, it gets, you know, why not? It's like, we gotta, you gotta wear the wings at a different point, or not wear the wings at all. It was one of those. It was kind of confusing. It seemed a little staged and a little edited, because uh, it wasn't really giving what a good answer, a clear answer, but they were just like, um, for the first part of this show, the the beginning of the show, we want you to be very natural, very together and toned down and showing your authentic authenticity. And the wings aren't really, you know, a part of that look and the vibe and the image we're going for. So she's like, okay, okay. I'm finding... Sometimes Naomi, just like a little check-in, I'm finding Naomi sometimes a problem. But because Winona might be stressed of the show, from the show, um, or getting the show together, it might just be like triggers and not necessarily an actual issue. That's what I'm getting from this, this episode. Um... Again, Hurricane Winona is like, they're <laughs> having this meeting on stage. Um, all of a sudden, Naomi brings up like the vocal court, the vocal court, a vocal coach. And they're having this side meeting and Naomi's like, Winona's like, y'all gotta go. Like, I have nowhere else to focus. I'm trying to focus. Can we have another, uh, can y'all go off stage somewhere? Nobody on stage having these random re. re- weird meetings which i understand uh yeah and they were like literally right next to her <laughs> she's like i'm trying to work um so the, she kicks them off stage her voice is tired her body is you know aching from the fall or the rollover or whatever she's giving her mom notes she's like should i give you notes and i'm like dang you gotta give her notes now like y'all you just freestyling the show or something why are you giving her notes now She's pissed. Winona is furious over... It's just, you know, these little things are popping off and she's just stressed. And uh, the backdrop on the certain song or song or something was not being reflective of the actual uh, life of wherever they were showing. And she was like, this is not what I want. I don't want no barns. I don't want no haze. I don't want nothing. I think, you know, probably a trigger from, you know, her child, her memory, her childhood. So that's Hurricane Winona. Then at the end of the show, at the end of the episode, Hurricane um, Winona, episode two of The Judge on OWN. Um, it's showtime, and They seem to, it was nothing crazy. They start the show. It seemed to go great. It was um, her kids first time seeing, you know, the grandmother and their mother performing as like, you know, functioning humans and not like two year olds. So, yeah, nothing else to say. Um, thank you for listening to these last, these first two episodes. I'm going to continue to go on and I'll see you next episode. <laughs> For this review of the Judds on O. And I have this fierce single that Sammy McKinney and these little guys put together, baby. I got a single that'll make you jump up and dance. And if you can't dance to that, you got a hole in your soul, okay? Mm. <laughs> <laughs>